Do you know the word? Lament. Like many great words, it followed us. Followed us from Terra. Do you know what it means? That word. Lament. It means to mourn. To regret. To remember. We lamented. I lament. After our founding, when we were graced with our ceramite plate, our heraldry, and our name, we saw the tumultuous events of the 21st founding. We saw the traitors. We knew that our destiny lay elsewhere, so we did what a fleet based legion does, and we flew. To the far reaches of the Imperium, my brothers and I traveled. How those infinite gulfs between the stars parted before us. I cannot tell you how many worlds we saved, how many trillions our actions have aided, directly or otherwise. With permission from our father, Sanguinius, we spread the only thing worth spreading. Peace. Indeed, we did so through war, sometimes bloody. Brutal and inhumane war. But to look to the means and criticize them can render the ends broken. I can tell you of the people I myself aided. I can tell you of the cancers cured by the Narthesia my war on my own arm. I can tell you of the worlds I saw, the worlds I helped rebuild. I can tell you of the scent of the bread baked of pink wheat in the high world of Lonos, and how even now I can still smell that bread. How I remember handing it to the poor, the hungry, and the brave. I can tell you of the wine gifted to me by the Lady Regent of Norn. Wine made from fruit grown in her family's orchards, in the same orchards that have flowered for over 900 years. That bottle is still somewhere in the Imperium, though I do not know where. I cannot tell you of so much more, for those tales are lost. The records, those tablets, scrolls, and recordings are simply gone. Gone to the place where all tales of heroes must go. Cast to the ethereal winds of the universe itself. I could tell you of our finest hour. I say the following without ego and pray I do not seem arrogant. I believe all should know of Corellia. Many of my former brothers in arms called us cursed. I do not consider such a descriptor to be apt or just. Being an apothecary, I work with only what I know and can see. However, not all are as I am. I learned that the hard way. The rumors of our legion being cursed spread like wildfire on the splinter bark plains of Janasik. Thus, within a century, the rumor stuck. I admit, we had our share of bad fortune. There were battles we lost. A warrior who cannot admit his losses doesn't deserve to speak of his victories. Our chapter master was fond of saying that. I was coaching humbleness and truth. I hear his voice still, whispered sometimes on the wind, or echoing down an abandoned street. I'm losing my course, I apologize. I admit when a battle seems certain, something would occur to strip that certainty. Yes, we often knew the taste of the ash of loss on our tongues, but we also knew the glory of victory of honor and justice. I tell you of the rumor because it's important to understand how things are the way they are. Remember, means and ends. Corellia. Now really I think of it now. In the 38th millennium, we were called homeward by the High Lords. You see, the Eye of Terror, the dreaded smear in the skies of so many worlds had begun to vomit forth its insidious children once more. This time, however, no mere rabble of babbling sycophants appeared. Draped in the armor of the cowardly, 
armed with the weapons of a traitor and pouring hell behind him, Abaddon and his black crusade came forth. I will not call him the despoiler, for I believe that to give our enemies titles only emboldens them to further their wickedness. By the time we arrived, Abaddon had already burned a dozen worlds to ash and offer just as many to his sorcerers, allowing demonic forces to claim billions of slaves or toys. We are not a chapter remembered for its wrath or hate. But trust me when I say this, we all hated him. We hated with an intensity reserved usually for love. By the time we reached the Sagmentum, he had destroyed two entire chapters of Astartes. Both, coincidentally, name the Celestial Swords. May they find the peace that is earned by only the purest of warriors. And let me say a name to you. The Mortificators. You probably don't know who they are. That's no great loss. Their ranks are filled with warriors chosen from a night world. A small, savage place that does not breed humans. It breeds animals who just happen to be human. The Mortificators are a successor chapter of the Ultramarines. That is a fact that still surprises me to this day. Again, you ask yourself, what all this has to do with anything, correct? Well, the Mortificators were to hold Karelia alongside us. They were to defend its nine billion population. It's hab towers, it's skulls, it's refineries, all of it, from Avanon and his Black Crusade. But we had spent three weeks building defenses, training humans and doing all we could. We received word that these noble sons of Gilliman, these successors to the legends of Old McGregor, would not be helping those nine billion people. They would not defend those hab towers, those scums, or those refineries, because my brothers and I were cursed. They abandon us. They abandon the soldiers, the mothers and fathers, the grandparents, all of them. In the name of superstition, they sentenced so many to death. We did the best we could. If you have it within you, please believe me. We spent six weeks fighting. Six weeks! So much is a blur. So much isn't even there. So much more isn't even a blur. I could list the names of the 804 starters who fell. I could tell you the color of their eyes. How they kept their hair. What jokes they laughed at. Or, I could tell you this. Each of them died for something greater than any of us. They fought for peace. They fought for a peace that Abaddon sought to choke from the citizens of the world. When all others turned away, we stood defiant, knowing the cost, gladly willing to pay it. After six weeks, the sons of the Great Khan and the sons of Gilliman appeared in the skies. The Mortificator's dereliction of duty had caused four billion deaths. Do I believe they could have saved every soul? No, I do not. Do I know that in combat, a single blade can change the tide of war? We left Corellia broken, with barely enough hands to turn our fleet outward toward the Gulf once more. I had to be subdued and forcibly sedated because I refused to leave. I was not alone. I believe we all would have laid our weapons down that day and stayed on Corellia. But we turned our heads and flew into the dark. We were gone for a century. That time spent in silence, meditation, remembering, mourning, lamenting. Two thousand years after Corellia, we were called on again. This time joining a shield made of four chapters, the Maelstrom Wardens. We were to flit around, being not much more than an early warning system. Fate, however, had a different idea. 
It was there we met the Astral Cause. No amount of recounted heroism will ever lead you to what the Astral Cause are today. The Red Corsairs, they call themselves now. Their leader has been reduced to a madman. Supposedly a demon prince. I hope that is not true. I do not wish to imagine Luft Aeron. That rogue as charming and noble warrior is that. Aeron Blackheart and the Red Corsairs are not the Astral Claws. They cannot be. The Claws died on Badib. What a foolish waste. Miscommunication. Misunderstanding. The Luft believed the Imperial rulers on Badib were not only corrupt, but inept and truly lost. I do not support his rebellion, knowing what it led to, but I do understand it. I admit that by this point he was a different being. Too many decades spent fighting demon incursions in the dark spaces of Space Hawks. Too many lost brothers. Too many ignored cost. Too many ignored pleas for aid. We saw his homeworld. The world of his legion being ill-treated and acted foolishly. The truth, you won't hear, is as follows. Aeron begged and pleaded for assistance. He knew that the Wardens were too weak to hold back the horror. He begged for a crusade for support. He held others back, offering greater tithes if his pleadings were answered. That was the log that broke Barakon's back. Barakon refused to believe an Astartes would behave in such a way. What a trade prince knows of a warrior's life, I do not know. Heron wouldn't pay, and because he wouldn't pay, others had to. Remember this. Heron refused to pay tithes to those who wouldn't do the right thing. But his handwritten documents of succession guaranteed a bolstered bulwark against the Horus. Some traitor he was at the start, eh? Willing to defend the Imperium, just not willing to pay the extortionate rates of those trade guilds and the Mechanicus. I regret what happened, as do all the souls who witnessed tragedy. I am thankful that I was not there at the fall of the Firehawks. The sons of Vulcan carry with them the flame of humanity, and misunderstanding calls the Firehawks to be fired upon and killed. I remember my brother Shafi telling me what had happened. I remember how pale he was. It didn't take long for the news of the bloodshed and misunderstanding to spread. It quickly became a treachery and rebellion. My brothers and I were considered renegades, and when the end of the Badab Rebellion came, we surrendered to Imperial Justice. Justice. Remember that word. We were cast off again into the space between the worlds to spend 100 years in crusade, atoning for our sins. Of course, our luck by then was spent. We faced the dreaded mindless horde of the Tyranids who, with time, decimated our numbers. And then the end came for us. All things must end. So did we. The death of my chapter saw the loss of perhaps the greatest breakthrough ever made by an apothecary. My surgeon brothers and I had managed to fix the flaw in our gene seat. We had cured the black rage. You may know of the lies of the Inquisition, but do you know that because of them, the flaw of the sons of the blessed angel may never be cured? Inquisitor Talaris betrayed not only my brothers, but also the Knights of the Raven and the Scythes of the Emperor. Our final death, the death of my chapter, came at the claws of a tendril of the dread High Fleet Kraken. It was there that I ended. After seeing so many of my kin consumed or ripped apart thanks to an Inquisitor, I knew it was over. And so did many others. In truth, I cannot tell you where many of us went. I know my dear friend Shiren was rumored lost in the void, but I see him sometimes, in my slumber. I do not believe he is dead. 
even though I fear he may be. It's been many years since I've worn our plate, borne our heraldry, or seen another Astartes. You may have seen me on any number of so-called backwater worlds, helping those most in need. By modern imperial law, I'm a heretic, a traitor, a coward. I am none of those things. I simply seek to help. I seek to spread peace with what little power I still have. According to the codices of the Astartes, I'm deserving of execution. How can I do anything but help those I was conditioned to help? How can I not do what the Emperor made me do? And how can I do anything but mourn my lost brethren? Do you know what lament means? To lament. It means to mourn. To regret. To remember. I still see my long lost friends. I still think fondly of the human families I aided. I can never forget Luf's broken hearts as he saw the Imperium's response to his actions. I remember a past future that will never be. One that lives on in my mind. I lament the losses of so many. So many heroes and heroines. So many dreams and loves. But then again, what am I supposed to do? I was a lamenter once.